Uh, Mike in Houston says that I'm wrong, and we'll find out why I'm wrong. I certainly hope I am. Mike, uh, how are we wrong here reporting on this? Oh, hey, how's it going, Alex? You know, I read all the articles and stuff, and I, I got very concerned because I'm a PC tech here in Houston, Texas, okay? Uh, so I sent this over to my attorney. I sent the actual house bill over to my attorney, and he read through it, and he said there's only two sections that pertain, pertain to uh, people that deal with computers as far as the PI license holders uh, law. And one of those, you know, is for data security specialists uh, that are, you know, working on you know, large enterprise networks. The other one uh, has to do with if you're actually collecting information for a civil or criminal trial. All right, um, stay there. I want to hear about this on the other side. Hold sure. on. I want to specifically sure. hear about this when we get back. We'll be right back with his call, and then I'm going to really try to hurry through your calls. Mike, uh, Gary, Sam, uh, Ed, Charles, many, many others. We're going to go really fast with your calls. Stay with us. Headline, Ron Paul, I hear members of Congress saying if we could only nuke Iran. Said that Thursday on my weekday show. Cover more of that before the end of this broadcast. Also, they want to register knives in England. Okay, let's uh, go back to Mike in Houston. He's saying it's a limited groups of computer repair people. And, yes, I, I see that language. And that's how they're interpreting it. But if you read the full language, uh, this is uh, basically them now recruiting large numbers of computer snoops and, and, and trying to force large cadres uh, of uh, PC repair people, computer repair people, uh, into this. But uh, you're saying you disagree. But, uh, I don't know, five different publications that are computer publications disagree with you. I read the bill, and I, and I can certainly see the angle you're at, but I know how government operates. Go ahead and finish up, Mike. Oh, yeah, hey, Alex. Uh, well, hey again. Yeah, I, I sent it over to my attorney and had him look it up and down, you know, because it, it really concerns me. It affects my business, you know, very heavily. So uh, I had him look at it, and he's like, no, there's, not, there's nothing in there to compel me for what I do as far as repairing, you know, hardware and software to do anything like that. Um, you know, he said basically if I get put into into a role of security, uh, you know, as far as, you know, for non-public data, that I would then have to be licensed. Or if I was to actually start doing, like, you know, review and analysis of, you know, uh, computer information for criminal or civil uh, court cases, but other than that, you know, it's it's not necessary. Well, let me ask you this: uh, I mean, uh, do you own your own company or do you work for a company? Both. I uh, do both. So I, I do uh, on the side of my own company, and I, I work for a business. Well, so, I mean, how does it work? Because you see in the news all the time, people take their computers in for repair and. They get in trouble for gambling, or they get in trouble for a picture of their two-year-old walking around with their diapers half down. Uh, I mean, how does that work? Well, you know, you know, part actually part of that law, part of the law that we're actually discussing, protects individuals a little bit more uh, when they're bringing their computer to the repair shop, because that repair technician, if they go and snoop on your computer, they're actually engaging in illegal uh, review and analysis of data. So they would actually be charged with a criminal offense for not having a PI license when they're reviewing and analyzing data. Um, and the Fourth Amendment should actually protect those people that bring their computer in because they're they're not asking to relieve any privacy unless they start giving up passwords and but, that kind of but thing. But you see the cases. You see the cases uh, where they're going through everybody's computers. I mean, I mean yeah, that's I all over the place. You know, they they, they put out so much. You know, stuff but I mean, I mean exactly. But, 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 I mean, you know that uh, law enforcement, no longer peace officer, but law enforcement agencies recruit all sorts of service people to spy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they do. You know, I've never been approached for it, but I'm sure that they do, you know, especially at higher levels, you know, when you have big companies, you know, I'm, I'm sure that they do. All right. Hey, uh, good to hear from you. I'm going to get some expert guests on about that, and, and, and we're going to get to the bottom of this because I find it bizarre that, what, five different publications would say one thing. I read it, and... Uh, it, it, it looks like they can interpret it for that, but we're certainly going to find out. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Ed in New York. You're on the air. Ed, welcome. Hello, Alex. How are you, sir? Good. Thanks for calling. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you for all your work. I, I want to thank you for personally uh, uh, breaking, me, breaking me away from this, uh, this, this huge matrix that, that, that we exist in. 
Uh, Truth Rising, I saw it yesterday. Incredible film. Everyone needs to see this film. Uh, I actually brought a couple of tears in my eyes. Um, you touched on a, uh, on this global warming scam earlier with a previous caller. Um, Al Gore, what, what, uh, as far as you know, uh, you know, with your research, what, is, what does he stand to gain? Why, why was he pushed to the forefront as this, uh, uh, you know, this so-called uh, high priest of uh, this, uh, this, you know, Gaia worship? Uh, well, number one, Al Gore owns a large oil company. Uh, has the controlling stock in it, given to him by his uh, father, Albert Gore Sr., the former senator. Uh, Al Gore has also bought in to the Carbon Credits Global Exchange. It's a private group. You will buy your carbon credits for being a human, for breathing. They are saying the gas you exhale that plants breathe is a toxic waste. And, 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 and as the Club of Rome uh, documents written by Richard N. Haas, head of the CFR state, that is then a way to regulate and control your life. Also, it takes over the larger environmental movement that means well. I mean, I don't like the fact that uh, lawn fertilizer, uh, they are allowed under uh, law, they passed 10 years ago, I didn't know about this, my dad told me about it this weekend, I looked it up, uh, to dump toxic waste basically into the fertilizer. I mean, just hundreds of horrible things, and then that's put on your lawn, your pets absorb it, you absorb it, it runs off into aquifers. I mean, there's there's thousands of serious environmental things that are happening. Or, or coal-fired plants burning dirty coal filled with mercury that we then breathe. That hurts us. But see, you're not going to hear about any of the real environmental things that are going on or cross-species genetic engineering that causes major problems. Mm -hmm. It's all, no, let's have a global tax and we'll buy credits from the private central banks, which now just doesn't let them control the fiat currency, which they can then debase and control us with like they're doing now. Now they uh, trade in what humans breathe, what all animals breathe, and, and, and then they falsely list uh, one of the four life-giving elements of the planet. Uh, and, and by elements, I mean ingredients. Sunlight, solar radiation, okay, uh, water, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Those are the four ingredients. And... Uh, I mean, have you seen the TV programs where they walk up to citizens and give them the scientific name of water? Yeah. And yeah. then say, should we ban this? And all, all of them, almost all, say, and I've done this myself, yes, ban it. <laughs> because you're giving them the scientific name for water. Right. Uh, one, one last question, just uh, switching gears. Uh, living in New York, I have a 10-year-old daughter, and this concerns me greatly. Uh, New York trying to pass, uh, uh, you know, uh, trying to make it law, uh, to you know, to make vaccines mandatory. Do you have, happen to have an update on that? Well, let's be clear. Now, see, listeners everywhere, new listeners, or whether they're listening in Austin or Kansas City right now, or places like KCAA and, and you know, in San Diego, they're saying, "Well, I thought vaccines are the law." I hear it on the news every year before school starts. No, there is no law anywhere in the U.S. that anyone has to take inoculations. Okay, but 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 then if you don't have them, they'll kick you out of school and then arrest you for truancy. But that's a fraud because the school, does, by law, can't kick you out for that, so they're fraudulently kicking you out of school and then triggering criminal penalties, penalties to go after you. So you're right. New Jersey and New York are trying to pass laws to make over 50-plus vaccines the law, and, wow. and they're just completely criminal. I mean, the government can't make you put that in your body. Then the cattle public says, oh, but you'll make my child sick if you're not inoculated. Hey, if you think that those inoculations are protecting you, then your child's already had it. So that's a right. cop-out to claim that other people's kids have to have it. Again, it, 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 it's a basic fraud, but the public doesn't have any knowledge of science anymore. Uh, and uh, so it, it's very serious. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. I, I, just, I, just want to, I just want to thank you again, and uh, keep up the good fight. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and, and folks, don't believe me. There's no law yet to take vaccines. Check into it for yourself. Uh, let's go ahead and take some more calls here. Let's go ahead and talk to Gary in New Orleans. You're on the air, Gary. Hey, Alex. Yeah, I'm a Prison Planet subscriber, and um, me and my girlfriend, a couple of girlfriends of hers, were watching it last night. And towards the end, they had sort of like tears in their eyes. And then you grab your bullhorn, and they all jumped up like you scored a touchdown and started screaming. So I started playing guitar to be cool, so I might have to give me a bullhorn to be cool these days. But uh, <laughs> anyway. Well, um, that's a lot cooler than wearing a bunch of bling. So, you yeah. know. Yeah. Well, um, what I wanted to, um, I had a couple of questions about Blackwater coming into our city and also the price of the um, 
gas in Mexico, but something else I really wanted to talk to you about is I was in Dealey Plaza about six months ago when Nellie Connolly had passed away, and I was standing on a triple overpass, and I was taking a picture of this um, Texas state flag at half mast, and it was kind of dark, and when I developed, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's totally a pyramid overlooking Dealey Plaza. Oh, yeah, the whole thing's Masonic. Whole it thing's is. Masonic, so, yeah. So you knew about that? Yes. Well, it's hard to bring up something that you might know about. So. Send me anyway. the photo. We'll post it. Uh, anything uh, else? Um, well, I wanted to find out, um, could you explain or elaborate? In other words, no one knows that it was Blackwater that came into our city during, um, you know, Katrina. Did you witness and, that? Um, I didn't, but many of my people did. I was in the uh, heart of I'll tell you what, area. stay there. I want to hear more about it. Put okay. you on hold. We'll come right back and talk about that. It's already the final segment. Hard to believe we must ban this evil chemical dihydrogen monoxide.